battles, maybe you are too old to think and just to rethink the world. You are dreaming. Hi everyone, Sharina here from the Young European Leadership Delegation to COP22 here in Marrakesh. And we just wrapped up day four of the first week and just want to do a quick recap for those of you who want to know what's going on or maybe missed the sessions that I attended, maybe just want to know what in the world I'm doing in Morocco. So each day of COP22 has a theme and today was the Young and Future Generations Day, which is pretty fitting for what our delegation here is focusing on. We bounced back from yesterday uh, and I'd say the energy levels are still going up. The highlight of the event of the theme day today was the intergenerational inquiry by the UNFCC. Uh, like I said, there's a ton of energy, a lot of people getting fired up, and some notables such as Her Majesty's Ambassador to Haiti, Sharon Campbell. So everything looks good, um, so what's missing? Well, the session that immediately followed was on financial, technical, and institutional support for scaling up youth climate action, and the room emptied to just the first two rows. There's a lot of energy, but when it comes to getting down to the nitty gritty, the room empties out, which I feel seems to kind of represent, you know, what's going on here. So since most people missed out on the side event, uh, I'll highlight a few of the methods of getting youth involved, and from the Global South in particular. So in response actually to a question from the audience about even Youngo kind of leaving the Global South behind, um, a representative from Mauritius stood up and talked about the strong movement that's evolving in her country, um, from hosting local events like their own koi to bringing their delegation. And I think that is representative of what we need to do to be heard, to not be complacent and let our generation get left out. We really need to push forward, um, and so to name a few of the methods discussed include, you know, they included crowdfunding, uh, which tends to be underutilized for the climate and actually really useful for reaching out to millennials, um, social entrepreneurship, which actually put on a really good show today with Ari Eisenstadt from Dream Ventures. And there's actually a real growing use of technology and market me mechanisms for climate change mitigation and adaptation. And lastly, uh, reaching out to private corporations for funding and support. You can almost feel the room cringe uh, when the suggestion was made. Um, but there really seems to be a lot of mismatch from trends in the youth movements, from degrowth to social entrepreneurship, from divestment to private funding. And I think the solution is not exclusive to any one of them. If there's one thing I learned today, there's no silver bullet for climate change mitigation adaptation, especially when you've got the whole world weighing in on it. <laughs>